It's June the 23rd, 2011. This is 508, a show about Worcester. Uh, today, across the nation, there were rallies in support of Tim DeChristopher, and one of them was in downtown Worcester. We'll go there to tell you more. We are having a rally uh, for justice for Tim DeChristopher. Okay. He is a young guy about my age. He went to a illegal auction that the Bush administration was having and bought the land that they were auctioning off for oil drilling. Uh, one, $1.8 million worth of land. Uh, to protect it from being used to burn, um, you know, the fossil fuels will be used to be burned and help contribute to climate change. So to help stop climate change, Tim De Christopher bought this land. A couple weeks after he did this, he raised all the money to pay for it. But the Obama administration is still persecuting him, pressing charges against him for disrupting the auction, which was illegal to begin with. And so we are out here calling for justice for Tim DeChristopher, calling for the Obama administration to drop charges because Tim did nothing wrong. He has raised the money to pay for it. In fact, he's doing it to protect my future and the future of young people just like me. I'm Michael Benedetti. Also on today's show is Dante Comparetto. How are you doing, Dante? Hi, Lister. Good. Hello, everyone. Hello. And Brandon Melican. How are you, Brandon, sir? How are you doing? Good. Spectacular. Thing. Wonderful, wonderful. We have a lot of stuff to talk about on the day, show today. I'm glad that Dante's on the show today. One thing we're going to talk about is, as we've been talking about for the past few months, what issues should the city council candidates be discussing as they campaign for election this year in Worcester? That's one question we're going to ask Dante and keep expanding on. We're also going to talk about revocation of nonprofit status. We're going to talk about a thing coming up about green solidarity economy. We're going to talk about bitcoins. You know about you know about bitcoins? You Pretty cool stuff. This is, this is an you know, Worcester doesn't have anyone that at least publicly is doing a bitcoin exchange. We'll get into bitcoins here in a minute. Hold on. All right. Sorry All right. to interrupt. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize you're God forbid show anyone here. interrupt on this show. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about tobacco ad ban. We're going to talk about closing Downing Street. We're going to talk about an online permitting system. We're going to talk about secure communities, maybe. Oh, I'm not really interested in that too much. We're going to talk about chickens. We're going to talk about... Uh, How long is the show? Neighborhood councils. We're going to talk about this stuff for, like, super fast. Okay. You know what this show is about, Brendan? You know what happens on the show? show? What is this the show? About? This show, first of all, is in a beautiful day. Second of all, this show is about two things, which are discussing the news in a way that doesn't insult people's intelligence mm -hmm. and not making the news any more boring than it has right. to be. <laughs> but if it has to be boring, we so can... So be it. We can, so be it, exactly. Or we'd interrupt. Exactly. There's, you know what? There are important things in this world that are super, super boring. Mm -hmm. Doesn't stop us from talking Bitcoin about Bitcoin isn't show. one of them. Bitcoin is not one of them. What, do you want, what, what, are, what are you excited about, first of all, these topics? Hmm? Bitcoin? No, let's start with... We, get, we have a guest. Let's start with a guest. That's Dante. Um, I want to ask you about uh, neighborhood councils. Sure. This is something, this is a provision of the current charter, yep. which we've has been in action for whatever, 10, 20 years now, right? 20, like 20 years, right? That's right. And But it's never really been implemented. It's the only part of the charter that's never been implemented, yes. What is this? Uh, neighborhood councils, as defined by the charter, are you know quasi-governmental uh, neighborhood-based bodies okay. that are composed of um, between four to nine uh, elected members, I mm -hmm. believe, to two-year terms, okay. um, that play an advisory role to the city council of all things that pertain to the neighborhood, okay. um, as well as certain um, authority over certain self-help functions, like right. street and sidewalk repair, okay. uh, trash refuge, beautification projects, housing rehabilitation, things like that. So it's actually aligned, it's actually, uh, spelled out in the charter. So they would be advisors to the city council on certain things from the neighborhood and they would actually have power over certain things. Certain things. If, if the city council were to actually um, approve that. Yeah. So what has, so there are right now there's no neighborhood councils. What right. has to, and, and it's not like the city is like, hold on, I'm going to get an umbrella. You want an umbrella? I'm fine. All right. You're going to outman me. I'm putting it down the ground. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> in order for the city, in order for there to be a neighborhood council in some neighborhood, mm -hmm. what has to happen first? Well, um, the neighborhood residents would have to agree upon a boundary of what constitutes their neighborhood. Okay. 
And once um, they've agreed upon uh, this boundary, mm -hmm. uh, a, a petition would have to be circulated amongst the uh, registered voters in the area. Okay. And we would have to get 20% uh, of the registered voters to sign this petition in that area. So if 20% of the voters in an area sign a petition and they say, we agree that this neighborhood should be defined by these boundaries and we're 20% of the voters. That's right. Then what's the next step? The next stage is that it has to be submitted to the city council for their approval. Ah, and so conventional wisdom would have it that the city council would never approve this. Sure. Do you think that's so? But but people are trying to change that. Yeah. yeah? Um, I think you know. Uh, I think frankly, the key is is in uh, getting broad public support for it. Okay. And you think then people would put pressure on the councillors to say, hey, seriously, guys, this is sure, kind of cool. Sure. And I mean, the more that we have more of a community dialogue about it, I think the more they may warm up to the... Because uh, I've, I've had conversations with many of the councillors, and they all have um, a lot of unanswered questions that would like to, they would like to be... I mean, by and large, they're supportive of it. They're just mm -hmm. concerned about a bunch of questions that they have mm. about it that they would like to see addressed. And I think that these kind of questions would get addressed over time. Great. So I think that this is totally a question I want to ask all candidates for the council this year. It's just say to them, you know, do you, do you, do you support the idea of neighborhood councils? That's right. If it, kind of, if it came before the council, would you say, sure, let's do it. You guys can be a neighborhood council. Mm -hmm. That's one question I want to ask all the, all the candidates, just to keep it on their radar. That'd be great. Brendan Milliken. You know, practice on me. This is one of these. <laughs> do you support? This is one of these weird. This is so. This is one of these weird Worcester politics things that I'm pretty sure you, you like, have some strong. Uh, Dante and I have discussed this yeah. one at length, and yeah, I, I think it's absurd that that we haven't enacted these. I mean, it, it's pro. It's much like the argument um, for a strong mayor. You know, mm -hmm. the, the argument when it really boils down to is like it, it's actual democracy, right? It's the closest right. you'll come to an, an actual representative form of democracy on a local level. Right. Whereas what we have now is is an actual dictator, whether you like that word or not. Yes. Um, the neighborhood council is the same thing. It's the closest you can come to actual democracy. And the reason it's in the charter, or the reason it would seem to be in the charter, is that before we went to a plenty form of government, we had a huge representative council. You know, we, we had this, uh, the common council, which I believe there are 40-something members of, representing a huge area. We drilled that down to six at-large councillors, and then, you know, the, 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 the uh, district councillors. Wait a second, we had 40 people in the city council? The, the common council. There are two councils, that, and I'm trying to remember the names of both of them, but the, the larger of the two bodies was a large body of people. Yeah, wow. I mean, but representing... The, the city, right? I mean, sure. you need that. You need it's a large a big number. city, and it's got a lot 200, of... 200,000 people. Different people with different One person view. can't represent, you know, in, 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 a, in a fair way, can't represent, say, from Tatnick Square to Webster Square, right? Those are right. very, very different areas of the city. It's it's unfair to think that one person is going to be able to represent that area solidly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the neighborhood councils do a great job of drilling that down uh, to, to a neighborhood level. And, you know... I, too, am very uh, hesitant to, to believe that the council would ever willingly uh, you know, kind of give up power that way, and I think that's really all it comes down to. Is I think it's one of those things that makes the, the existing structure, a power structure in the city uh, seem even more irrelevant than it already is. Because it's mm -hmm. like, seriously, if the city council isn't in charge of streets and sidewalks in What are they going to be in charge of? They're going to like, be talking about that's chickens all and they ever talk forever. about. <laughs> we'll have to be banning and then unbanning <laughs> chickens every other week just to keep something going. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I think it does, it, and I think it's a valid question for any, any power structure. So like, do we really want to dismantle our own power structure? Except this one was built into the charter for a reason. Mm -hmm. It was discussed heavily when the charter was put into play. Mm -hmm. There's actually, uh, I'd be happy to give you a, a copy of it if you'd like to photo, photocopy it sometime for the website. But mm -hmm. the copy of the charter that I have is actually the pre-release charter when okay. it was still being dis discussed. Uh -huh. And you actually have the pro and con, like, you know, the folks who are in favor of, of the charter and the folks who are on the charter board that were not in favor of it. Yeah. And there, there was a good argument to be made that at the time, it was an, an argument, and it was a good one, that, that we didn't need the neighborhood councils because we already had CDCs and CDCs were going to fulfill that role. Well, which is silly in the way that CDCs have come about because they're all concentrated in one area of the city. So I don't right. get any better representation in my neck of the woods or to my neighborhood because we don't have any. Don't CDC they? Don't the CDCs here. mainly do weird real estate deals? Well, essentially, what they're doing now. But you know, there there, there was supposed to be more of a, 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 a you know a development function which is bigger than just uh, say like low income housing or what right. have you, which they primarily focus on now and have done a wonderful job if that's what their focus is supposed to be. But it still leaves out the sort of granular representation that I think a lot of people would like given the opportunity. Yeah. You know. It's one of those things that, you know, this, is, this is when we get long-winded, right? But the, the idea that local government is still the last bastion of corruption in government, right? You don't find real corruption at the federal level or the state level anymore, and that sounds mm. absurd for people to hear. Real corruption happens on a real local level. 
and the more involvement you allow people to have, uh, you know, on, on a local level, the less likely that's going to be. Mm. And this is how you get people both engaged with the city on their their own at their own neighborhood level, and let that filter its way up. But you know, one of the things I say, I can understand why. I think the knee-jerk reaction would be the city council would never allow this to happen. However, in a terrible economic cycle that doesn't seem to be improving, when it becomes that much more difficult to, to fix the streets and sidewalks that the city is already obligated to do, it Blame seems the neighborhood council. almost reasonable yes. to turn around and say, you know what, if we just started get, maybe we could give Tatnick Square the opportunity to fix their own sidewalks, and then they would stop demanding that money from us and we could go, you know, we could push it elsewhere. Mm. That's, there's, there's, there, there might be an opportunity <clears throat> If there are actual neighborhoods that would like to organize to push this forward, uh, using it instead of a look, using it instead of uh, viewing it as a power grab, viewing it as a way to take a little bit of a burden off the city's back, um, which the city might actually be open to at this one moment in time when they really can't seem to afford to keep the lights on. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I want to move on to the next topic, even though we have a ton Sorry to say that. about this. No, hey, no problem. We're we're still under the ten minute mark. That's very reasonable. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, Nicole Apostola pointed out this week that, that uh, the IRS had revoked the tax-exempt status of a bunch of like non-profits, basically, for not filing for three years in a row. And it was an interesting list. I just want to read a couple of things from the list. The Lions, These are Worcester, just from the Worcester list. The Lions, the Kiwanis, um, North High Alumni Association, the Firecracker, the, uh, the anarchist bookstore that used to be in town before my time, uh, an organization called Worcester Community Television, which was on Lovell Street, which I don't think is... I know WCCA used to have a site on Grove Street. I don't. I would guess that that's probably not some old version of WCCA. But um, ladies, Hibernians, um, also Linda Parham Ministries. Linda Parham was on this show a couple of weeks ago, so her uh, her her ministries nonprofit has apparently become uh, has defunct since then. Anyway, it was just sort of interesting to see like a list of I don't know projects people have worked on and then said. Well, some of these are still like active groups too, though, right? I mean, there are like legion posts that apparently still have guys drinking, you know, sitting at the bar. That it looked like their status was revoked. It wasn't clear whether or not they were reapplying or trying they to get just that hustle order. around and get that paperwork. Apparently, it's just it's, it's <clears throat> in the mail. Interesting, fascinating slice of life. I want to uh, July twenty third at the youth center. There's a conference called Building a Green Solidarity Economy, putting up right here in Worcester. Building a Green mm-hmm. Solidarity Economy here in Worcester. I want to have some people who are you're working on this. I know. But we want to have some more, you were like, uh, I don't know if I'm, we want to have some more core organizers come on the show and talk about that, because that sounds yeah. pretty cool. Um, Bitcoin, Brendan Mellican. Mike Ben Betty. Did you know that you can buy a restaurant meal in Worcester with a Bitcoins? I, I did see an advertisement <laughs> for that, yes. <laughs> Duck Yao on Main Street. And that's great. I mean, this is, you know, th- yeah. What is Bitcoin? Well, that's one of those things, right? I mean, that uh, you, you can't really define it because it's a currency, and anyone what who tries love? to define, yeah, I mean. Yeah, the Economist actually wrote a pretty good article about uh, Bitcoin recently, and I think that's kind of what it comes down to: is that when you try and define what what a currency is, you find yourself getting very circular, right? Like, I mean, economists will always be able to define an economy mm-hmm. because uh, you know a, a a currency because it seems like such a natural thing. But I mean, whether you're dealing with a bartering system or any sort of you know uh, you know uh, an exchange system, I mean, that's currency, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you uh, you and I exchange labor. That's yes, currency. Sure. Bitcoin is a digital currency, and it's a uh, it's supposed to be anonymous. It's supposed to be. Uh, it's, I don't so, know if it's supposed to be anonymous. It's supposed to be decentralized. It's, it's supposed to. It does not controlled by any one organization, any one computer. It's controlled right. by consensus that this is the right way to do it. I guess anonymous in the sense that uh, it's not like a bank where uh, every time you make a withdrawal at your ATM machine, uh, someone is tra- is tracking your withdrawal. Okay. The idea with Bitcoin is that there are ledgers that are kept where the actual um, currency itself, as it moves from hand to hand, mm-hmm. it, it, there's there's a trail that follows. Mm-hmm. But it's also very easy to, the, ex- the way exchange works uh, with Bitcoin, like you can actually do real world exchange with, say, cash uh, for Bitcoin. So it's kind of easy, at least in theory, to put a, a, a roadblock up where you'd be able to track online, you know, where that currency went to, mm. because there could be a cash exchange that would then come into the real world and then start back up again somewhere else. Yeah. Huh. Well, then, anyway, there it is. Just want to point that out. Um, Worcester. The, you can buy drugs online with with Bitcoin too. That's actually one interesting thing, right? I mean, what's yes. the, the Silk Road? That's a website. Yes, that's actually this is run it's gotten Tor, super famous in the last month or so because, because you can buy think that they can shut acid it down. and yeah. because yeah, because of Charles Schumer and who else? Um, Some uh, other was, guy. Was oh, Lieberman, oh, 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 Mansion from West Virginia. It, guys who have yet to be on. Guys who are still work, trying to set up their AOL, AOL these accounts. These dudes, sorry. these dudes, totally against this. They're trying to get the government to crack down. It probably will happen. Have fun while it lasts, kids. Worcester is going to be sued by uh, uh, tobacco companies over its tobacco ad ban. This is an, a ban that says that you can advertise that you have cigarettes. You just can't say what cigarettes you have. I think this is kind of fascinating. 
It makes me want to, you know what I want to ask? I like the idea of promoting health. I have never smoked any substance in my entire life. Yeah. I'm a clean liver. I mean, I've drank a lot in my life, but I don't drink anymore. I'm clean living. I'm strong. I work out at the Y. I have good cholesterol, good blood pressure. I try to be a role model. I eat a vegan diet for the last 10 years. I want to see the Worcester City Council step up and do the same thing. If they're concerned about people's health, we need to ask them blood pressure, cholesterol level. Forget about questions about the wire. That's what we're going to start asking we're this ask election them, cycle. What is your blood pressure? What's your at-rest heart rate? And what's your cholesterol? What, is, what, what do you think is the one number that, 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 will, that would, the one fitness number that we could ask? Um, Just to make it resting heart, resting heart rate? We could do that on the show. heart rate or BMI. I don't know what would be most... Yeah, a lot of people are against, think body mass index is hooey, A lot of though. people are against uh, trying to ban advertising in a city, well, too. But we're, I mean, the, the body that would be asking the BMI <laughs> of, you know, it doesn't seem to have a problem with it. I think that, how the, much the, can you bench is a good one, though. Do you think you'd ever get, other than Rushton and, uh, and, and Joff, do you, you think, think Rushton knows how much you can bench? I do, yeah. <laughs> we could bring a bench out here. We could, <laughs> we can do it in your basement. Or logs. We'll we can have a nurse away. come out and measure the. I actually hope that the city gets sued into oblivion on this one here. I really <laughs> hope that, just to, you know, there aren't many places left where where the the tobacco lobby can can make a you know a last stand. I actually hope they declare Worcester to be their last stand and yeah. <laughs> bury us right into the ground. This is such an absurd. Uh, ordinance that just can't stand up to any sort of legal scrutiny at all. Even if it's nice that they're promoting health, right? I, I get that you're promoting good health, but you know, it, things in Thanks, in courtrooms, you know, people tend to focus more on law than they do on. Uh, you can pr press a button in the handle and it'll pop. Phil Palmieri's uh, insistence on good health. So yeah, I, I really hope that the tobacco lobby it will be generations before we climb out of that hole. All right. Well, Dante, I know. Is that negative? Dante, I know you have a lot to say. I'm I'm not going to let you. I'm going to move on to the next topic. <laughs> Stop pointing that um, um, you know, do you know the city has an online permitting system now? An online permit? The city manager mentioned this at the last city council meeting. Haven't looked at it? It just reminds me of your lecture on I will teach Worcester to be rich. What's funny is <laughs> right after we had that conversation, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the last one was... This was about, your, this was about why can't you pay your bills online? Well, after we had the conversation, Joe, someone actually sent me a link to... Um, the city's uh, payment system for uh, excise tax and whatnot, uh -huh. it's even worse than I would have imagined that it would have been. It actually runs through Unibank. Hmm. It's the most abysmal thing in the world where it, you oh. know, it actually pulls up all your registration information automatically when you put in your, your, re your uh -huh. actual registration number. Uh -huh. But then it makes you repeat entering in all of that data along the line, right? So you have to enter in like the same form data, like where you live, your uh, building address, and one over. Uh, it's an absolute failure from a... But it also took two weeks for the payment to actually process. Which, well, it's a start, Brendan. It's not a start. It's, it's, it's a, a start. Step backwards. <laughs> it's a giant step backwards. Next thing we're going to we're going to have a big abacus at the uh, tax and, uh, tax collector's office to, to do do your taxes and your assessments with, a, with an abacus. There's no other show with so many laughing faces and so much negativity <laughs> as this program. Um, the Downing, opposition to closing Downing Street. So we talked about closing Downing Street on the show. This is this thing, this is part of the pilot thing. I want to just recap for people. Pilot payment in lieu of taxes. This is basically the city saying to the big colleges, you don't have to pay taxes because you're a nonprofit and the law says that you don't have to pay taxes. We don't care. We're going to, like, basically get into some sort of shouting match with you. Not shouting match. We're, we're just going to try to get you to pay taxes. We think we should. You should pay more tax, more than you pay to the city. And ban your advertising while we're. And at we're it. not going to tell you. Can tell you can say that you, you you can say that you teach classes. You just can't say which classes. No, that's not part of it. This was talked about for so long that on this show we begin to call it "bilet for bull crap" in lieu of taxes. But in fact, this finally went through, and what it basically has come down to is extremely seems like extremely small amounts of money, relatively speaking, changing hands in exchange for giving the colleges uh, a lot of slack on land deals they want to do. In Clark's case. The land. This is not how the newspaper describes it. This is how I describe it, based on reading every detail that I've ever read about this. This is what's going on. In Clark's case, they want to close down Downing Street, which is which is the the street on kind of the, the north side of campus. They want to close down half of that street to vehicular traffic and just make it a pedestrian thing because they own property on both sides. And there you go. Um, I kind of like the idea. I feel like I'm a pedestrian. I feel like a pedestrian street and a car street is the same street to me. I like the idea of closing it down. The neighborhood people have been slow to organize. They were, they were, I think they were sort of blindsided by the fact that this is even going to happen. Neighborhood people are now organized. Um, and and uh, um, on June the 15th, there was a public works meeting in which councilors Clancy and Petty, who were the uh, people on, the, uh, on that committee, voted to recommend approval for it, although neighborhood people were at the meeting to say they didn't like the idea. June the 21st of the city council meeting, uh, Councillor Haller actually like suddenly 
basically the council now flip-flopping from like this is going to happen to like whoa wait a second suggested it should go to the traffic subcommittee to find out what's the story with traffic because there's only a few through streets between like park avenue and main street in that neighborhood and this is one of those through streets um and now and councillor clancy backing her up um on that despite what he had said a week earlier uh billy bro also apparently speaking out in favor of closing down the street Kevin Kassen points out to me that someone flyered the entire parking lot of the sole proprietor with anonymous flyers saying, call your counselor, tell them not to close the street. This is, like, <laughs> by the way, way far away from Main Sal, sole proprietor, in many ways, way far away from Main Sal. Um, uh, on, we should point out also that online Nick Cuba wrote an awesome thing on uh, Eric's Image of Worcester blog doing his own sort of back-of-the-envelope calculation for what would be the maximum fire truck delay. And he, found, he thought it was basically, maximum would be 90 seconds additional delay based on his guesstimations for any house because of the closing of the street. That was just what he thought. I haven't seen any numbers from anybody else. So. I don't like the, the idea that we always focus on the public safety uh, you know, response times. I get that it's an easy thing to focus on, but it's, it should just be uh, two conversations. One, like, is it going to negatively impact traffic patterns, fire trucks or not? And two, is the neighborhood actually behind it? That's the one thing where I think that the councilors are actually smart in doubling back a little bit on this, is that it clearly was not a community-driven uh, project. It's like it's not, it's not the city manager's street to give away, right? It's the, it belongs to the city of Worcester, yeah. which are <clears throat> residents, right? So I mean, if the neighborhood has an issue with it, they should be the ones who start the conversation, not the last ones invited to it. And the city kind of failed on that front in bringing people to the table in advance. Yes, yes. This is, this is something that the social. Billy Bro just wants to shut the street down because it'll be le less hookers walking. You know, they'll only build. You won't be able to drive and pick up prostitutes uh, on Downing Street anymore. He would shut down every street in Maine South. Give them you all know, the Clark. No streets, no street walkers. No street walkers. It would just be yeah, pedestrian traffic walkers, and that doesn't sound sexy at all. I, I mean, want to say a nice thing, Billy Bro. Thank you for advocating for the neighborhood, no matter what your stand is. <laughs> we just need to point out we do not want to make fun of gadflies for being gadflies, no, I mean, only because we disagree with their positions. On well, these. yeah, and it, it, again, it, it's. And, and I would agree that the street, it's not a big deal to give the street over, right? But it, have that conversation. But I'm, I don't live in the neighborhood, so my opinion is completely moot. I, I want to ask Dante. Dante, you got 30 seconds well, This on is this? actually a good argument for neighborhood councils, actually. Neighborhood. Because, um, you know, if you look at uh, some of the main arguments the opposition has mm -hmm. against closing down Downing Street, one of the very main points is that, well, they're never given notification about this thing. Right. Uh, happening, and if you if neighborhood councils were in place, you know there's going to be a two-way channel of communication happening between the neighborhood and the, and, and the council, hmm. and so uh, it, it, not to mention the fact that you know the neighborhood residents, the neighborhood council were in place, would be the ones directly dealing with this issue. Right. So this just would have never have come become an issue. I feel like so it wouldn't be one district councilor and a ton of non-district councilors dealing with an issue, which is basically right. a totally and this neighborhood is just issue. One of many reasons. Um, I, I mean, so many reasons why um, things fail in the city of Worcester. If you look at like the arts, arts and culture district plan, or um, any kind of master plan the city comes up with, there tends to be neighborhood opposition from it because the city of Worcester just comes up with this plan without getting any citizen input, yeah. and then they unveil it to a bunch of people opposing it, and then the thing just gets shut down, shelved somewhere. But yeah. if 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 re if residents were actually incorporated into the planning process in the first place, there would have been buy-in. And they probably would have been sold on the idea in the first place. I think neighborhood councils in that respect could solve many issues like that. So. Very cool. Very cool. Well, here's another. This is the number one issue, I think, of, of all time for the city of Worcester, or at least of the summer, which is this thing of chickens. Can you keep chickens in your yard? And this happened a couple of weeks ago. I don't think we actually talked about it on the show. We could have. This is on the June 14th city councilor meeting. Uh, councilor Haller, who is the being the big champion of, yes, you should be able to keep chickens in your yard, said, the question is not whether... But how? But in fact, the question still seems to remain whether. Uh, 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 Connie Lukes raised concerns about it. Connie Lukes' whole raison d'etre for these French speakers is to raise concerns about things. So that's really cool. You'd think by now the, the rest of the council would have realized that the angle would be Let's come in here and tell Connie we hate chickens and we don't want anything to do with chickens. Then she'll come out in support of the what chickens. What is wrong with chickens? And then we'll How just, can you people be against chickens? And then we'll just suddenly so, we'll agree with Connie. And then we'll all get our way just by letting her actually be uh, you know, opposed to the things that we're in favor of when we're actually all on the same team. The other, the other, the other chess being played here, man. The other, <laughs> the other, the other councillor being, uh, being gone on, going on record as being skeptical of this is Bill Eddy fulfilling his role in council as being a pointless waste of space saying that uh, he had had people in his name he had had constituents talk to say to him if there's chickens will there be more coyote and fox in incidents in the district 
Which I feel like if somebody comes up to you and is like, there could be more coyote and fox attacks in Worcester. <laughs> The proper thing is not to bring that concern to the council. The proper thing is to refer that person to a mental health professional for their paranoid delusions about being attacked by a fox. You know, if for those that are actually interested in, in, in the you know the eating habits of fox, fox they're very territorial and they have a huge area right that they cover like one individual animal. Yes. So the fox that you know Bill Eddy and his neighbors are concerned about in their backyards uh -huh. is in likelihood, all likelihood, the very same fox that we're seeing in this neighborhood in the morning. Right, because they cover a massive, massive area. Right. So the likelihood of you bringing in more fox, no, you're just going to, even if the fox is going to eat the chicken, the fox it's may just be roam the same more fox. widely. Right. And coyotes, I mean. You're not really creating more fox or coyote habitat. Right. You may be encouraging the fox and coyote to Food, yeah. have a more variety in its and day. We don't seem to have an issue with scavenger uh, dogs in this area, right? Like our coyotes are not like picking through garbage, right? They're eating groundhogs and squirrels and other, you know, animals, yes. things that are alive, right? Yes. So. We're, they're not likely to be going after our food, which is already here. That's one of the other points, too. We already have people that are legally raising chickens in the city that have been authorized by the the, board, the Public Health Commission years ago before we decimated it uh, to budget cuts that were given approval uh, by the city to legally raise chickens. You know, Providence Providence apparently has has legalized raising chickens. And you know what? The city has been ripped to shreds by, by, coyotes. by coyotes. Do you want to be yes. like Providence, Brendan? <laughs> All of those people that are living in the Hooverville under 95 in Providence, they're there because the coyotes came in and tore their houses apart. So yes, we can't have chickens. That's I would I would uh anyway, it's this has been referred to the health and public public health and something. I don't it's raining too hard for me to get my paper out. It's been referred to a committee that hasn't met since May and so I think that none of these guys are meeting the rest of the summer. So in the fall probably. I think the last time that health uh, that committee met was when <laughs> Phil decided that we're going to ban cigarettes in the city. So, All right. you know, so this could be same anyway. committee. So we'll see what happens in the fall when these guys talk about more about Downing Street and talk more about chickens and what we're allowed to do in the city of Worcester. Dante Comparetto, mm -hmm. we have uh, about three minutes left in the show. What issues would you like to hear city council candidates discuss as they run for election this fall in Worcester? Well, clearly I'd like to see what they feel like about, um, you know, uh, about neighborhood councils. Yeah. Um, I also would like to see what they plan to do to retain our, um, our graduating college students. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe a follow-up question to that might be, how can we revitalize downtown? I don't want okay. to hear about City Square. All right. <laughs> Besides that. <laughs> and um, I think those are the two main ones for me. All right. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Well, thanks for being on the show, man. Thank you. Is there anything you're excited about in Worcester this weekend that people need to know about you want to promote? I'm not, I'm not going to be around this weekend, so I have nothing to promote. There's um, a Time Banks orientation meeting happening. When is um, that? On Saturday. Okay. Where? Um, at... Aria De Silva's house. Okay. I couldn't tell so you people yet. should. It's like 41 Freeland. It's like Street, down, down off by Crystal like Park, kind of, right? Yeah. So yeah. people could just Google like Time Bank Worcester. Is this like a time trade thing? Yep, that's right. So this, this is this potentially a cool thing. People should find out about that. Brendan, anything coming up in this weekend? Yes. Uh, Paul Collier, his uh, big uh, New Orleans style uh, festival is oh, this weekend. Right. Uh, it's for both Friday uh, night. I believe it starts at five in the evening and runs till you know people <clears> are told to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all day Saturday, a ton of uh, bands from all around the country this year. Um, uh, alcohol, tons of food. Uh, really, really great opportunity to be, assuming the weather holds out, to be out of doors, uh, drinking with good people, listening to great music. How often do you have that opportunity? Hanging out in street? Piedmont, being cool. Hanging out downtown, right on Dewey Street, being great. All right. Well, guys, thanks for being on the show. Everyone else, thanks for, thanks for watching. Everyone, stay dry, and we'll see you next week.